Hey Merfolk fans, I'm Joe. Thanks very much for joining me today. If you'd like to support my channel, please check out the link above to my Patreon page. I'm back with round three of a modern uh, competitive league. I've made the switch back from friendlies since I feel like uh, we've got a really strong list uh, to be running now with Merfolk, and I want to be um, fighting the good fight with all of you guys who have been putting up since such fantastic results recently. Uh, sitting at one and one, we are on the play. I think that's the first time we have been uh, in this league, and this is this is a pretty nice hand. I think this kind of hand would be best against like a mid-range deck, since we've got some um, some virtual card draw with Benthic Biomancer, uh, more card draw with Spreading Seas, um, messing with their lands, especially on the play. Also, really good against Tron. Uh, we've got the land interaction and a counterspell. The opponent mulligan to six, and uh, I'm going to open with Benthic Biomancer. Remember, guys, you're, you're looking at uh, Ben this league uh, to help you form an opinion on whether you know, he's actually winning us games or if it's really just the main deck counter spells and Ben is you know, no better than Curse Catcher or Miscaller. I've heard a lot of people saying things like that, so hopefully this league will uh, disprove some of that. Okay, Stinkweed Imp, Faithless Looting. The last time I saw this opponent, I think he was on like a Mono Red Phoenix or something like that, and looks like he's on Dredge now. So Spell Pierce, um, pretty solid against Dredge. So I'm going to go ahead and Spreading Seize this Mountain. I'd like to just draw cards. Uh, mountain uh, could potentially let them go for like Cathartic Reunion next turn. So taking them off of Red, not such a bad plan. It, it draws us the card and messes with their mana a little bit. So they dredge the Stinkweed Imp. We see a Faithless Looting. Sorry, um, a Prized Amalgam. Now green is the color we'd ideally like to take them off of because it makes uh, Life from the Loam potentially dead. Now the way that dredge works is they, they, the lands that they have in their opening hand are pretty much the lands that they're going to have to work with um, apart from lands in the graveyard. If they can start casting Life from the Loam, they have access to basically limitless lands from their sideboard. I mean, not their sideboard, their graveyard. But keep them off of green, um, and they'll never get to cast Life from the Loam. So Shriekhorn, there's not a lot of scary stuff right now in the graveyard. We just have this single prized amalgam. Here's another Faithless Looting from hand. That means they're going to get to dredge that Stinkweed Imp. Creeping Chill number one. I don't know if you guys have heard me complain about Creeping Chill, but it's... Probably my least favorite card, maybe after Goblin Grenade. No, I think it's... <laughs> I think I hate Creeping Chill even more than Goblin Grenade. Because Goblin Grenade, you know, in the end it doesn't matter. Like, Goblins isn't a real deck. <laughs> I, I'm not being serious, but whatever. Merfolk isn't a real deck either. So Creeping Chill um, is an absolutely unnecessary card. Dredge was already a top deck in modern, and now they just get free lightning helixes. It's just so stupid. It makes no sense at all. Such a bad card design. All right, so we're going to have to start dealing with prized amalgams. Looks scary, but is it really that scary? Harbinger says no. So let's bounce prized amalgam, and uh, we're going to leave up spell pierce now. Definitely not attacking into this stupid narc amoeba. The Lord is going to give us access to Island Walk. Um, I, I went back and forth between whether I wanted to cast Spreading Seas or Harbinger, but we, you know, we can't let the opponent keep cracking in for six every turn. That's too much. So Bounce Surprise Amalgam. Hope the opponent um, doesn't find a life from the loam to dredge. And if they do, we can spell pierce it and then take them off green next turn. Okay, so no life from the loam here. Um, but there's two of them once they dredge for the turn. Another Creeping Chill. What a, what a cool magic card. So now I'm at 14 and the opponent's at 24. All right, getting in with both. No blocks, down to 10. If the opponent has a land to play, it looks like they don't. And then they just conflagrate for zero. All right, so no land drop means that um, Spreading Seas is going to be excellent here. Let's go ahead and slam that. And uh, yeah, Mutavolt is good. It means we'll get to land a Master of Waves next turn if we want to. Or Adapt Ben uh, if we don't cast Spell Pierce. Um, 
So we're not going to block either of these creatures. So definitely uh, correct to attack here. I'm just going to go Shriekhorn. Uh, there's another life from the loam. So they actually went to their draw step because they need lands at this point. Uh, just dredging is not going to do anything. Uh, even hitting... Um, even hitting, you know, multiple extra Creeping Chills is not going to get them there by itself. Actually, I guess that would be pretty good. Um, I could chump with a Mutavault, but between four on the table and six more from Creeping Chills, I could get wrecked. Uh, but they really, really want to have a land here so that they can dredge Loam and play it. So Spreading Seas, um, the all-star right now. It looks like the opponent's not going to be able to cast anything this turn, which means I am going to be able to adapt with Ben. So uh, yet again in this league, this is the third uh, third round, um, and I don't know how many times I've adapted already. It's probably like at least five, if not six times. Okay, and uh, the one drop draws us into a lord. Uh, I pitch one of them because it's redundant. We don't have that much mana, and we don't have an ether vial. And I really like having these uh, counter spells, even though the opponent is trying to, um, with all their might, draw into a land off the top of their deck. That land off the top of our deck was clutch because now we can slam Master of Waves and hold up Spell Pierce. So note that Ben drew us a card off the top. It wasn't a land. And then on our turn, we drew a land, which was super necessary for us in order to be able to get an army established and hold up Spell Pierce for the opponent's turn. So good job, Ben, once again. Tired of people bad-mouthing this card when they don't understand it. Like, they say, oh, Modern's so fast. How are you going to beat a deck like Dredge? How are you going to beat a deck like Goblins? How are you going to beat a deck like, I don't know, Blue-Red Electro-Dominance? Well, the, the way you're going to beat it is by having a 2-2-1-1 that draws you cards, right? 2-2-1-drop two, 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 that draws you cards. It's just, it's so good in so many spots. It, it facilitates our instant speed plan where we pass the turn. We can hold up Deprive, hold up Spell Pierce, hold up Merfolk Trickster. <laughs> you guys can tell I'm really excited about this card um, and it's been a big part of this recent flurry of Merfolk 5-0s. Every single list has run four Benthic Biomancers and for any of you who think that you know it's just happenstance and this guy is not actually helping us get those 5-0s, you just don't know what you're talking about. So um, let's go ahead and look at round two. Sorry, not round two, but game two. All right, we're back for game two. Let's check out the sideboard. So in this matchup, I left in the Spell Pierces, but I took out uh, the four Deprives. Uh, I think that's probably correct. Uh, Counter Magic can be good if they go for Conflagrate. Uh, it's a pretty powerful spell. Um, but we've got a lot of good stuff that we can be doing. Let's see. Um, took out the four Deprives. Took out three Tricksters. They're not amazing in this matchup because... Um, you know, when they tend to get creatures on the board, they tend to get a lot of creatures on the board, and tapping down one of them is typically not going to really be that much value. So I'm not, I'm not, in, and you know, they tend to operate on sorcery speed on their own turn, so flash isn't super relevant. So I, I'm pretty convinced that uh, Trickster isn't very valuable in this matchup. So what did I bring in? Four, so how, seven out, and then four relics in, and three echoing truths in. Definitely a pretty strong upgrade uh, post board. So I thought a little bit about keeping this hand. Even a Mutavault off the top within the first two draw steps uh, would be massive because I've got <clears throat> three spells with um, blue and then generic as in their casting cost to draw me more cards. But these kinds of hands are traps. Um, we do have our number one uh, sideboard card, but we need at least one more land. So I had to mulligan this. Opponent kept seven, and this is reasonable. I can fight with this at least. And I think I kept that Echoing Truth on top. Nice piece of interaction. Opponent starts with Faithless looting, and they get a Blood Gas and a Prized Amalgam into the yard right away. That means that Land Drop next turn is going to bring a bunch of power. There's that Echoing Truth. The opponent's going for Faithless looting before making a Land Drop, which makes me hopeful that they may actually have kept a one lander. So let's go Spell Pierce. And um, let's see. Yep, the opponent passed. So um, if we can get something going, 
might be able to um to steal this game with this semi awkward mulligan. All right, so opponent's got a lightning axe, discarding a blood gas, but no extra land drop. They're still not drudging anything. Echoing truth is a little bit awkward. We really, really wanted a creature there. And there's that uh, there's that land off the top of their deck right in time. So they're gonna get two blood gas and a prized amalgam this turn, and they may be able to do something with this two mana now. So there's a Cathartic Reunion, pitching two Narc Amoebas, drawing them three more cards. They still don't have a Dredger in the yard. I am going to Echoing Truth these two Blood Ghasts on the end step, because I'm going to, it's just a good way to use your mana. Uh, ben is interesting because he lets us potentially fix this hand a little bit. I'm not really afraid of three damage from uh, Prized Amalgam, and odds are those ben those uh, blood gas are not coming back at me next turn. Huh. So this is pretty tricky because Echoing Truth gives us interaction. Um, in order to get the Ether Vial down this turn, I'd have to pitch either Master of Waves or Echoing Truth, and both of those cards are you know the higher value cards in the hand. Uh, so in the end, I, I discarded the Ether Vial. It's totally um, possible that the opponent brought in Artifact Hate anyway. So we've got four lands on the table, and you know Ether Vial would be helpful, but um, not strictly necessary. The so Shriekhorn potentially going to help them get their Dredge game going. Creeping Chill once again, super fair Magic card. Life in the Loam. Um, I, I sort of bluffed a, a Spell Pierce there. And they get back one land. They're going to get in with Prize Amalgam, you know, as predicted. Uh, unfortunately, I took an extra three from the Creeping Chill. All right. So, I mean, not much to say here. We're going to play Master of Waves, get in with Ben, pass the turn, hope that the opponent doesn't go crazy. There is a Conflagrate in the yard now, though. I think that was put there by the Shriekhorn. And a an Narcomoeba and a Creeping Chill. Life from the Loam gets back three lands. That's a bit of a combo with Conflagrate. The opponent can either go to my face for like seven here. Oh my god, and an Assassin's Trophy. So possible that if I played my land out last turn, um, I'd have Echoing Truth live here. But these cards in my hand might just be more valuable at this point to loot away with Ben. If I draw into another one. Another Master of Waves gives me some hope, and that second land, um, I am going to play it now to leave up Echoing Truth. Okay, surely they couldn't have another Assassin's Trophy, so attack in with Ben. So they do have um, access to Life from the Loam and a bunch of lands, and I'm at 8. So I'm pretty sure they could just get a bunch of cards and go Assassin's Trophy to my face. Not Assassin's Trophy, Conflagrate. Alright, so what's happening here? They just go conflagrate with what they had in hand. They they kill most of my board. I think hit me for two. Here's two blood gas coming back. Yeah, and you know this is getting a little bit out of control. The blood gas have haste. I can take four from the other guys and bounce the blood gas again. And we're just praying to the master wave god at this point. Can we draw a third master of waves off the top? And does it really matter? Let's see how this goes. Faithless looting, dredging. There's another creeping chill. All right, what a good way to win this game. Uh, sorry, to lose this game, to Creeping Chill. Number three, I think? I don't know. One, two, three. Hmm. All right, so, you know, we had a bit of a chance there on that mulligan to six, but, you know, uh, sometimes you're going to lose to Dredge. Uh, Assassin's Trophy is cool tech from them out of the sideboard. It deals really neatly with Master of Waves, as well as, you know, things like Relic of Progenitus. So, Creeping Chill. Let's go to game three. Back to game three. I'm going to be on the play this time. So, definitely a keep. So, I could have played uh, Silvergill Adept here, but... Um, I'm a little bit more interested in holding up these spell pierces. So, a bit of wasted mana there, but the opponent's not doing anything either. Now, having drawn that third land, I can comfortably play out Silvergill Adept. Fourth land right on time. 
opponent's going for Dark Blast, and I'm just going to let that resolve. Uh, it's not enough value for me uh, to try to counter that. He can just dredge it and kill the Silvergill again. All right. So note that by playing out a creature, um, I got his dredge card online. Uh, it looked like Dark Blast was his only option in the hand that he had there. So he did dredge Dark Blast. Fortunately, it was a pretty poor dredge. And he's just passing the turn. Now, Dark Blast can be um, a huge beating against us uh, since it just kills Master of Waves cleanly. Uh, a one drop that kills your four drop is typically pretty strong in the matchup. I think the pretty clear play here is just Lord past the turn. Now the Lord um, can get the Master of Waves toughness outside of Dark Blast range, and hopefully these counter spells would help protect further. So going for Life of the Loam, and um, I am going to counter that. We don't want to give them more lands and open up uh, their mana. And it looks like they're just passing the turn, so that was great for us. They didn't have um, a fourth land drop. Which means we can probably repeat that cycle. Um, next turn, they're going to dredge and go for it again, and we can just spell pierce. Uh, one of the nice things about playing against dredge is that, um, to a certain extent, they're kind of on rails. They, they have to do what their graveyard says to do. And so it makes it very, very easy for you to just sort of understand how things are going to play out in the next turn or two. So Kraken with the Lord. Opponent still has nothing on the table. So um, Silvergill, hopefully drawing into another land, I think would be pretty good. Okay, and we're just going to sit back on this Lord because, as I mentioned, uh, we know what they're going to do this turn. Opponent hits a Narc Amoeba. It's good for them, but not, you know, not amazing. I think they wanted to hit some, some higher-powered dredge cards. Life from the Loam still not going to happen. Those three lands will stay in the graveyard. And uh, Relic right on time. I'm going to play the Lord. Um, go to attacks. Opponent's probably going to block the Silvergill and take three. Go down to 13. And I'm just going to play and crack this Relic here. I don't even want to give them any time for any kind of shenanigans. Um, I guess... The only thing, I, I think it's probably best to pass to their draw step. Let them draw life from the loam. It can fill up the graveyard. If they hit like a creeping chill, I can crack the relic in response and exile all that stuff. Um, if they hit a Narc Amoeba, I can exile that, etc. But in this case, I didn't even want to let them uh, dredge life from the loam. Um, so I just crack the relic right away, I think. All right, and there's another land. Um, having played that uh, Spell Pierce, not super necessary, but what does the opponent have here? Well, Cathartic Reunion pitching two dredge cards is pretty strong because now they get to start dredging like crazy. All right, so no Creeping Chills. And that's Karma for last game. And uh, let's see, they have to continue with this Cathartic Reunion, resolving it. I think they're like thinking about what cards to do. To dredge. Huh. Not quite sure why this uh, replay is stalling out here. Okay, so I guess the opponent just scooped at that point. Um, I had 10 power on board, and Echoing Truth, Master of Waves, a lot of stuff going on on my side. I think there was like maybe, I think the opponent did pass back to me. Um, might have drawn another Lord or something, but the game ended shortly thereafter, so... Pretty solid performance against Dredge. Uh, once again, uh, Ben helping us. Um, push more damage, draw more cards. Uh, we couldn't get there in game two, but that was largely in part to, draw, to mulliganing to six, not having ether vial, um, and the opponent, I think, hitting us with three creeping chills. <clears throat> All right, so currently two and one in this league. Uh, we lost to a wild top deck uh, by Goblins, and then solidly beat uh, Blue Red uh, Living End and managed to get there um, against Dredge. Actually, this game was a flawless victory. We were at 20 life and they had no permanents on the boards, uh, no non-land permanents, so felt pretty good about that. So please leave your thoughts down below. Um, subscribe if you haven't already, and join me for the next video where I'll be back with round four of this modern competitive league. Thanks guys, I'll see you there.